Well, welcome to the world, the greatest escape. Oh, we got echoing going on. Um, I'm CJ Peterson, and we have my co-host, author Michael Scott Clippin. And today we have the amazing George Dismukes back. We're going to be talking screenplay. Until we get there, Mike, how was your weekend? Interesting week. I was sharing before we started the broadcast that uh, daughter, son-in-law, and our grandson stayed with us for three or four days, and we enjoyed seeing uh, seeing the grandson. And uh, and I just try to remember if the days when our kids were that little, and or even remembering how uh, how they just never seemed to run out of energy and wished I had just a tenth of it. And uh, but you know, uh, just enjoy having grandkids. And uh, this week, Melly and I are going to be this weekend. Melly and I will be in Jackson, Mississippi, for the Mississippi Comic Con. Uh, mm-hmm. That will be Saturday at the. Uh, uh, Mississippi uh, Mississippi Mart Convention in Jackson, Mississippi. It will be uh, from, let's see, 10 to 6 on Saturday and let's see, from 11 to 5 on Sunday. And this will be our second Comic-Con we've gone to. We went to one back in, way back in January, the uh, Rogers, Arkansas Comic-Con. So really, this is kind of the first one. We'll have be going to one or two Comic Cons a month for the next, well, through the rest of the year. Oh, nice. So this kind of starts it off for us. So uh, looking forward to that. Never been to this particular Comic Con, but I've heard some really good things about it. Um, Andy Burke, book source, Robin Jones, say hi. Hello. Um, so, Mr. George, how was your weekend? Well, right now. Everything is coming up ready for harvest in our garden. Oh, nice. And our garden is extensive this year. We've got tomatoes. We've got chili peppers. We've got <laughs> we've got three or four other things that are just too much of, including figs and grapes. And that's all very nice until you start having to harvest them, mm-hmm. bring them in and process them or lose them. And uh, the processing gets to be a little bit tiresome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that always gives you fresh fruits and vegetables and all the like. Yeah. Yeah. I make a pretty vicious salsa that I'm rather proud of. So Ooh, that sounds good. Fresh made Ooh. salsa. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, so my weekend, uh, actually, since last Wednesday at 730, we've been in the ER with our daughter and in the hospital. So she just got released last night. So it's been a very long, tiring weekend. So that was my weekend in a nutshell. (laughs) Uh, Lord willing, we will have a better weekend next weekend. However, today we're going to be talking to Mr. George about screenplay writing. Can you kind of give us a little bit of your background regarding screenplay writing? I started in the movie business accidentally uh, when I was uh, 18 years old. And... uh, I went on on site for a movie called Hatari, and I wasn't there to write screenplays. I was there to do another job. Mm-hmm. But I looked at the screenplay and uh, walked up to John Wayne because in those days I wasn't afraid of anything, not like today. Uh, but I told him, I said, look, unless you take that teach that rhinoceros how to read, you got a problem. And he said, well, since you're so smart, go rewrite it. And I said, I don't know how. And he said, you're free to learn. We're going to teach you. That, you was my, that was my baptism into the screenplay world. Uh, since then, I've been to Hollywood and worked out there. I'll never go back. Uh, but while I was out there, I went to film school. At Florida Film School, of course, is uh, screenplay writing. Believe it or not, that was one of the shortest portions of the of the the class, uh, everything else was concentrated around camera work and lighting and all of that. It's real funny because the screenplay is is what you must have in order to shoot a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me put it in perspective for you. The screenplay is your blueprint. Just like an architect must have a blueprint to build a building. 
A screenplay, if it's done properly, will tell the director and the producer many, many, many things. It'll tell you how many actors you got to have, how many females, how many males, how many children, if there's any animals like dogs or horses. Uh, it'll tell you how many locations you have to shoot at. It'll tell you how many countries you're going to have to shoot at. Let's say, for instance, you want to shoot in Norway, you have to get permits to do that. So that'll tell the producer, okay, we got to got to go over there and get permits. Tell you how many costumes you have to have and what kind. The list goes on and on and on. Do you like that? Just, uh, I'm sorry. Are we back? Uh, I hear. Yeah. Okay. George, are you back? Just like. Just like an architect, doggy. I'm sorry, our doorbell's ringing. Uh, just like an architect building a building, you must look at the blueprints to know how many yards of concrete, how much steel, and so on. Everything that he needs to know about building the building he wants to build is in the blueprint. So a screenplay is a producer's blueprint. You can't, can't shoot a movie without it. And uh, it's, it's interesting because very seldom, it's gotten better, but back whenever I was doing the work in Hollywood, writers never got any credit for anything. And as a matter of fact, in Hollywood, the writers are now on strike for basically some of the same problems that existed back in the 80s and 60s. So uh, they can't do it without us, but yet we're the last one on the food chain. You know, so. Well, technically, you're the first on the list, though, because you you guys are the architect of the entire thing, apparently. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, uh, it's just one of those anomalies where, where they can't do without a script. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they figured they could get one anywhere. Hmm. Which they can't. Mm -hmm. And some of the so moving into how you make a screenplay. Um, make before a before you jump into that, um, Rob wants to know: Did you write the screenplay for your upcoming movie? Yes, uh, Sharon Song. I wrote the novel and I wrote the screenplay. And uh, so yeah, but even though even though I wrote it, we're now making changes to it additions, especially on the front end. Mm -hmm. And being able to point out that without writers, there aren't any stories. Percent. <laughs> Not only do you have a writer before the story, but every movie set in the world has a what they call a script doctor. Mm -hmm. So that if you have a scene that doesn't work, you know, in the old days, it's done differently now, but in the old days, you had you shot film. And so they had to process the film. But let's say that they shot a scene, uh, a, ser a series of scenes, scene number 50, 51, and 52, and so on. And then they and then they looked at them in the screening room the following day. They looked at, at the tubs or the screen, the, just the, the proofs. And then uh, they decided that scene number 51 is not what the it wasn't pulling an audience. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that a film is called a film chain because each scene in a movie represents a, a link in the chain. So if you have a weak link, you're going to wind up with an audience sitting there that you've lost them. They all, every one of them look like they just got a shot of Novocaine. They, they go away and when you lose your audience, you don't get them back. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, every scene must pull <coughs> and project you forward to the, to the next scene. So a script doctor will go in and he'll analyze script the scene number 51 and he'll rewrite it. And that's what I did. I did a lot of that. Wow. That's cool. So George, uh, a lot of people that watch the Book World uh, podcast are authors. So can you tell the difference, tell, uh, tell these writers, authors, what's the difference between writing a book and writing a screenplay? 
before you answer that, sir, Paul Hollis said, excellent explanation. Thanks, George. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Uh, writing a screenplay is a lot more tedious because it does not have any flow to it. Whenever you write a novel, one scene will flow into the next scene. Mm -hmm. It's just automatic. And you build to a, a crescendo, a conclusion. But with a with a screenplay, each scene that you write is almost autonomous whenever it comes to the to writing the scene, because you you have to write whether it's uh an exterior, interior, whether it's daylight or night, uh, what is surrounding in the scene, what's in the background, and then you describe who the characters are that are in the scene and what they're doing and then what they say. And it, it's, it's all formatted. In fact, there's format services out there that you can buy for just a little bit of money that will help you with the format on your screenplay. Um, but, Bill, Bill, excuse me, Bill Scott has an excellent question. Should you write a book or a screenplay first? So it's kind of like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which one should come first? In my case, I wrote the book first. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people that just wrote the screenplay without a book, or they wrote the screenplay first. I'll give you an example. Uh, Romancing the Stone. Mm-hmm. The screenplay was written first, and it was an excellent movie. And then they wrote, Catherine Lanigan came along and she wrote the novel. She's not the one who wrote the screenplay. Is it easier to write a screenplay if you've already got the book? Yes, it is. It's a whole lot easier. Okay. And in the case of, and, and, and also it helps with marketing. Let's say, I'll give you another example. Uh, the movie Jaws. Mm -hmm. The book was written, became a hit, and then they wrote the screenplay. And they did it using the script or the, the book, rather, as a, as a guide. So you can do it either way, and it's a matter of preference. But I like to do the, the novel first and get it published. And the reason is because the novel is a litmus test. If you write the novel and nobody is interested in it, mm, yeah. then it'll kind of give you a reason to not write the screenplay. But on the other hand, if the novel is a big hit and, and you get a lot of feedback and people want to know more, and where'd you develop your characters and blah, 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 write the screenplay and make the movie. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. So there, I know there are different elements when it comes to a screenplay obviously from a book, but there are things like direction, there's stuff that's verbal, stuff that's nonverbal. What all goes into that, those elements into it? You don't really have all of those elements that go into the screenplay. Whenever you write a screenplay and the screenplay is accepted for production, then the director will come in and write what's called a shooting script. Okay. The shooting script is a whole lot different but it's written from the screenplay, but he's going to give all the camera shots, whether or not it's a close-up, if it's a wide shot, so forth. For each scene, he's going to break it down and, and decide how he's going to shoot it. He's going to decide, decide how many pickup shots he wants for, like, reactions of, of an actor, from one, one actor saying something and then the other actor uh, reacting to what the first one said. That is all the director's job. The yeah. screenplays, the average screenplay should not be more than about 125 or 130 words. Some are longer, but whenever you write a screenplay, you have to keep in mind that each page represents about one minute of screen time. And so you want most of your, your movies to, to be around 90 minutes or less. Okay, so what are the elements that actually do go into a screenplay? And Paul Hollis wants to know what percentage of the screenplay is strict dialogue? Oh, boy. I would say that it's all based on the story. Uh, oh, he wants to know actually how many are not strict dialogue. 
how much of the screenplay is not strict dialogue? Two thirds. Interesting. Two so thirds. what are the elements that actually go into a screenplay then? First thing you do is you describe the, the location. Okay. So is it daylight? Is it dark? Is it interior? Is it exterior? Is it the city scene? Is it in the mountains, in the woods? All of this goes into your to your description. Okay? And then you have to describe the scene itself. And you have to, you have to keep that short as possible. But since you've got to say, for instance, there was an argument. Uh, she caught him cheating. He wrestled a bear. And then you go into to dialogue. And each character's dialogue is dialogue is, is in the middle of the page. You have the character statement and below it the dialogue. Hmm. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said interesting. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I've heard, I've been told, I've, I've actually been to a couple of uh, uh, writers' organization meetings where they had people that uh, were trying to presenting how to write screenplays and things like that. And one of the things that uh, I was told, I was going to ask you if this is true, is that if the screenplay is based on a book and the complaint about a lot of people, well, you know, they let cut a lot of the things out of that was in the book that I liked. If you read the book ahead of time before you saw the, the movie that was made from the book, that the screenplay is a greatly reduced version of the events and actions of the book because uh, kind of based on what you've described so far, because given the parameters of screenplays, it'd be impossible to get to, uh, you'd have 20 hour movies. Otherwise, is that, is that true? Absolutely. Uh, whenever I did the uh, screenplay for Siren Song, uh, we had to have a major meeting. I went into the offices with Thomas Meek and a couple of my actors, and we went through the screenplay page by page. It was 200 and some odd pages. I knew that was too long, but uh, we had to decide what part to keep and what part to kick out. It's a hard decision to make. You, you do want to try to keep the story as close to being the same as you can. That, that is very, very difficult to do. And then whenever you go to shoot it, you find out there's some things that, that can't be shot. And then you have to depend on either special effects or else you got to change the scene. I've got a movie that I would like very much to shoot. It's called Two Faces of the Jaguar. But I'm saving it for later because when we get to shooting that one, there's going to be so much special effects in it, I would say, Easily 50% of the movie is going to be special effects because there's a black jaguar in the movie and they don't follow directions very well. <laughs> and some of the things this one does, you, you can't, the union will give you a hard time if you start letting it kill actors. You know, they, they frown on that. Really. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this is Faces of the Jaguar, George's book that he's talking about. Hmm. Got two Faces of the Jaguar, it's the first one in the trilogy. So, so the one that follows it is called The Lost City, and the third one is called The Jaguar's Quest. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you read them, CJ? Not yet, <laughs> but okay. I got them on my to be read list. Yeah, okay. I got them all. They're right there. You know, so I have them. I'm sorry. So, I was going to ask you also is screen, or I've heard that screenplays are written in acts. Is that correct? Basically, yeah. Uh, each scene would, would almost be an act. Now, if you talk about breaking it down like a stage play where you have act one, two, and three, then no, not, not like that. But I think that probably each scene could almost be considered an act. Okay. But you got it's a capsule, everything is there. So, you how know? many scenes on average should be in one? How many scenes on on average should be in a screenplay? Two hundred. 
200 to 225 would be an average. And how many pages should be in the screenplay? Because you said 200 was too much, but you said 90 minutes. Well, around, per page. Yeah, about 125 to 135 is a good number. Okay. You can go a little bit over that, but you have to you have to kind of calculate this. Each page is going to represent about a minute. Some longer, some shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, depends on how complicated they are. I've got some scenes in Siren Song that that happen underwater that will be very complex because our siren, uh, for instance, is supposed to be able to breathe water. So in it, all the scenes that you see her in, she's not going to have a scuba tank on. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the people who are confronted by her will have. So we that's what that one's going to be a complicated movie to shoot. And, but I'm looking forward to it because Lionsgate, who's already expressed, yeah, that's my wife. We, we needed somebody because they could look like they were really pissed off. I said, I know the right person. <laughs> Does she know that's why you used her picture? <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Bless her heart. She, that's her first time out as a model. She worked with them. The photographer for about an hour and a half, two hours, and they got the shot they wanted. <laughs> So anyway, uh, it's a it's going to be a fun movie, uh, but it's going to be a booger to shoot. It's also going to be expensive because of the various locations. So, are there <clears throat> like templates online or examples online that people can find to kind of look at? Because describing it and seeing it sometimes are really hard to put the two together. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of places that you can go to. Online, just just look up screenplay writing, and you'll you'll have a whole plethora of, of websites show up. Some of them want to charge you, some of them don't. But the only way that you're going to really learn is to dive in and do it. Do it, and then after you have written your screenplay, find somebody that knows about screenplays, take it to them, get them to read it, and then sort of become an editor for you and show you where to go with it. That they, whenever I took screenplay writing in, in film school, we had to study that this was the considered the number one screenplay of all time to study for, to learn screenplay writing. We studied the, the bridge on the river Kwai. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to write yeah. that. And, uh, and we had a big discussion about it and the people that wrote it and what they had to do. So it's a damn good movie too, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with reality because the bridge on the river Kwai still exists to this very day. In the movie, of course, it was blown up. So you talk about a departure from the truth. <laughs> Dramatic license. Right. Creative yeah. license takes takes precedence. Yeah. So, for somebody who wants to write one, what like gold nugget piece of advice would you give them? If they wanted to learn about screenplay writing. Yeah. For example, we'll kind of take it away from somebody who's on the streets or an author. So do one for one and one for the other. Just what piece of advice would you give them? Well. The first thing you have to know is the mechanics of writing. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that, there's a whole, a whole bunch of different directions that you can go, go poetry, uh, novels, screenplays. But in every case, you have to write from the heart. If you don't feel your story, you're not going to be able to get it on paper. And also write something that you know about. I can't write any books about space travel because I've never been in space and never been to to astronaut school. So all I know is what I've seen on the movies, you know. Mm -hmm. So you must write about something that you are very familiar with and know about. That that was that's probably the, the best thing that I could tell you. I, there's a there's a movie that I really to use it as an example. 
there's a movie called My Cousin Vinny. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> yeah. love that movie, but if you get into that movie, you find out that whoever wrote it is a mechanic at heart. They know a lot about cars. Either that or they research for weeks to get some of the information that goes into that movie and comes across as humor. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So know what you're writing about. If, if if you don't know about gardening, don't write about gardening. <laughs> That's true. So uh, Bill Scott wants to know what is the term treatment mean, and have you heard of it? Sure, everybody has. A treatment is like an extended synopsis of a book. The hmm. uh, synopsis normally lasts a couple of pages. A treatment may last as, as many as twenty or thirty pages, depending oh, wow. on how much detail that you want to put in there, and also the length of the original story. The treatment is always an extract of the story itself. Wow. Novel, uh, anything. So is there any difference? I think you glitched um, again. Mike, are you there? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, everybody's here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the last, the last question I had is, is there any difference to the approach in writing a screenplay for a work of fiction vis-a-vis -a, -vis a work of nonfiction. Like some of the movies that Laura Hildebrand had written. I would imagine that, uh, and I haven't ever written a nonfiction book. So I would imagine the difference would be that you have to do a whole lot more research and make sure that your facts are accurate. Uh, I know if I was to write something nonfiction, the first thing I would be worried about is whether or not I was telling a, because, you know, you can get sued real easy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> and I know that shouldn't come into it, but it does. You know? so, well, if yeah. you're really concerned, it should come into it. That's, yeah. But uh, as far as the mechanics of writing the screenplay itself, that would be the same. Mm -hmm. But okay. doing your research and making sure that all your facts are, are right, that would be the difference. Um, Rob from Any Books Source wants to know, what would you use the treatment for? A lot of times people will use a treatment instead of submitting a screenplay to find out if there's some interest. Because writing a screenplay is a pain in the neck. It, it's, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but it's just so tedious that you don't really want to do it unless you have a market out there for it. So a treatment will be submitted to producers. Also to save time because the producer doesn't have time to look at all the submissions. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a, a film company that, that might be interested in the genre of, of story that you have, give them a treatment. The synopsis is not enough information. So a treatment, if I'm following you correctly, is kind of like basically a query letter only it's Ooh. regarding the actual story itself. Well, the query letter only lasts, what, two or three pages at most? That's what I'm saying, but it's a little bit bigger, but it's kind of like the query letter for an agent would be that's what the query letter would be for a director and producer sort of stuff. Is that yeah. following, am I following you correctly? Yeah. If I, if I wanted to sell Siren Song to a, to a producer, let's, let's say uh, uh, to Ron Howard. Mm-hmm. Rather than send him my screenplay, which also is dangerous unless you've got it. That's the next thing I want to talk about. You've got to get it copyrighted. Don't ever send a workout unless you have it copyrighted with the Writers Guild of America East or the America the Writers Guild of America West. Uh, do that and then send it out. But if I wanted Ron Howard to take a look at my project, he's not going to want to have to read the whole screenplay. So I'd send him a treatment. Then if he expressed interest after reading the treatment, I'd send him a screenplay. Hmm. So it's, it is kind of like the screenplay version of a query letter, only more. Yeah, it's, a pres only it's a presentation, basically. Yeah. You know. uh, Bill Scott's a good explanation. Um, well, sir, we're out of time. You've been a treat, as always. Happy to talk and chat with you. Thank you. Um, so next week, we're going to have Kelly Lynn Colby and Kevin Pettyway. We're going to be talking about the expanded universe. 
Um, some are saying indeed works says book source says thanks George. Um, but thank you for the valuable information. You're a font of it and love having you on. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I love being here. <laughs> thank you. So next week we'll catch Kelly Lynn Colby and we're gonna have, both of them have been on the show before and Kevin Petty where we're gonna be talking about the expanded universe. Um, so in the meantime, have a great week and we'll catch you guys next week. Same place you found us today. 